In this video, we're going to solve another constant acceleration problem. This thing says a plane takes 600 meters to uniformly accelerate from rest. Keyword here, uniformly, means constant. Constant acceleration tells me that this problem is one where the kinematic equations are true. The kinematic equations are true. And I've written the kinematic equations over here. I've also built my table, as I've done in several of these videos, in solving the kinematic equations. All I need to now is to get some data and fill out my table. Here's my x-axis along the runway. I'm going to say that the plane starts at 0 meters. It says that the plane takes 600 meters. So that means x is 600 meters. So there, I'll put that in my diagram from rest to takeoff speed. So it's initially going here at Vx0 equals 0 meters per second in this frame. So that's 0 meters per second. And this is whatever the takeoff speed is, which I don't know. Also, I don't know the acceleration in the problem. It just says it accelerates. It says it traverses this 600 meters in 12 seconds. So time is 12 seconds. So I filled out my table. I have two unknowns. Again, I have three equations, so it's overspecified. So there's more than one way to do the problem. Now I'm going to go ahead, as usual, to simplify things down a little bit. Uh, this was zero, so that's going to go away. This is going to go away because that was zero. This is zero, makes life simpler. This is zero. And this x here is zero. And again, if you can't see the equations, if you're not good, then rewrite them so that you can concentrate on the equation. This one says that the distance x, it has the time. What are they asking me to solve? The first thing is just to solve for acceleration. OK, I need to find equations with a. Well, all three equations have a in it. This one says, do I know x? Yes, 600 meters. Do I know 1 half? Yes. Do I know ax? No, that's what I'm looking for. Do I know time? Yes, only one unknown right here. So this equation will solve the problem. So for a, I'm looking for ax. And I see that this equation right here can be rewritten. So I'm going to do that. ax is equal to 2 times the distance over the time squared. Just rearranging this equation. If you can't do it so quickly, then take some time and do it in steps. I have 2, 600 meters over 12 seconds and I'm going to square that. Now 12 squared is 144. That's almost 150. 4 times 150 is 600. So when I divide this by 144 I'm going to get something I'm, I'm going to get something that's a little bigger than 4 times 2 is something a little bigger than 8. So I should get something that's about 8. I punch the calculator and I come up with 8.33 meters per second squared. Alright, part B. Part B says find the takeoff speed. So part B, I'll change my pin here. So for part B I'm looking for Vx. And because it says speed, an absolute value of Vx, but Vx is going to be positive because I'm moving in the positive x direction. So there's no need to even put an absolute value on it. Um, I need an equation that has Vx. Well, this one doesn't. These two do. Now, since I now know Ax, and in fact, I could go up there and write that in here if I wanted. I could use this equation with these numbers, but again, this would have a rounding area. It would be better if I'm going to use that equation to take this formula and to plug it in here and simplify. Okay, Which, by the way, will get you basically the same thing as if you choose to do this equation. So let me do that. If you chose to put this and plug that into here, then you would get an equation that looked like Vx is equal to 2x over t squared times t. 
and we kill one of those, and we get two times the distance over the time. Perfectly good way. The other way to do it is to take this equation, vx squared, and to plug in ax into there and work the equation that way. But I'm happy with this. The point is, as long as you don't do anything mathematically incorrect and you follow good logical procedure, you get full credit. So let's put that. Vx is equal to 2 times 600 meters over 12 seconds. 2 times 6 is 12. So this is just 100 meters per second. This shouldn't be too surprising. Because it's a straight line on a velocity time graph, this final time is twice what the average time and the, a the average velocity is. And the average velocity is distance over time, which was 600 meters over 12 seconds. So we should have known that from the way averages work. Notice that there's no rounding in this. Unlike if I had tried to put the 8.33 and put it in a punch to calculator, and you would get error in rounding. Okay. So again, try to use the formulas. Stay away from the numbers until the very end. This completes this particular problem.